Welcome to the Acuity Blog Spot, everybody. I'm your host today, Brian Garcia, and today we're going to be discussing managing data with Team Center and focusing on releasing data. So this is just a quick look at what Team Center can do for you, and uh, it can manage all kinds of data. But one of the most important things is, is releasing data and making sure uh, the people you're collaborating with have visibility to that information. So before we get into that, um, I just wanted to bring your attention to the Acuity website here, uh, acuityinc.com, and, uh, and focus our attention on the support train and FAQ. Um, you can reach any of the technical support people on the support line here at 877-228-1750, or you can send us an, an email if it's not urgent. Please leave us a message, either lo location and uh, kind of a, some details and maybe some screen grabs if you're emailing and then we can, uh, we'll get back to you within 10 or 15 minutes. Um, so I just wanted to show that there's actually a support request form as well to make life a little bit easier for people who like to do that. Um, but let's get right into the topic at hand here, Team Center. Here's the Team Center interface. Um, for those of you who have never seen it before, there's everybody's got a, their own login and you're part of a group and role. I'm here logged in as an author. I've got my home environment here and I can organize this as I see fit. Um, I've got for today's demo, I just have a demo work folder here and a couple um, items and item revisions in here. So in item revision, you can see A, B, or if you've been in the engineering world, we're all used to um, creating revisions of different parts and assemblies and drawings, what have you. Um, so I've just got one component here and then I've got an assembly, an item, and it's revision, just a single revision A. So just to get things started here, I just wanted to show you guys today just a kind of a simple, quick release. Um, there's different tabs and information here telling, you know, date stamps when modified and that kind of thing. There's a summary tab here and uh, gives you a quick preview of the, of the data that you're consuming here. And so this is just an NX file here and we've got a little thumbnail over here and, and, and some other property information. So my goal here today is just to kind of release this part. You know, maybe this data came from another legacy system, or maybe this is I'm collaborating with another uh, third party and they've created these files for me. I'm just importing them, maybe an IGES file, something along those lines. And then I just want to release that. So off to the left here, um, we've got some quick links here to kind of make life a little bit easier. So I'm just going to create a workflow process, what it's called in Team Center. And then I'm just going to do a quick release. On this. So all I care about here is just kind of locking this down. It's been released. We don't want anybody to make any additional changes to this. This is something we've agreed upon as a team and, and released and possibly is being manufactured already at this point. So again, we're locking down that data. Nobody will be able to make any changes to this any longer. And so just a simple kind of a few clicks there and you've released a component. And, uh, and now this could be visible to a shop floor a viewer of some sort. Um, part of your team that's manufacturing. This could be a drawing here. We were just working with CAD data and some visualization data. Um, so the next step I would like to show you, um, again, just kind of doing a quick look here. We can go into some additional details if you want to get a hold of us on the support line, and I'm happy to give you a, a deeper dive into this information. But we just kind of want to get a couple of highlights here and just kind of uh, create some discussion. And so and I'm taking this to the next level, as we all know, if you're working in the engineering world, there's multiple changes that can happen at some point. And so to kind of document that process, we can create an engineering item type. So I'm going to come here into my home environment, and then I'm actually going to create an item. And so, again, one of these out-of-the-box items is an engineering order. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to assign a part number to that, or document number, and then... Uh, I'm just going to call this a demo ECO. And then we can kind of go through the different things here in the wizard and add additional information if we choose to do so, other attributes. At this moment in time, I'm just going to go ahead and, and finish this. And we're going to create that piece of data in our home environment. But this is actually searchable to everybody on your team. So as soon as I've created this, you know, if you guys have pulled a part number, an engineering order number of number 11 here, somebody would be able to search on this and find this and see what you're you're up to here. So, so as soon as I've created this, I get a couple additional forms that are created. If I go on my viewer tab here, I can add, you can see these out of the box, different attributes 
and properties and add to that additional information here as I move along, you know, communicating additional, um, I guess, proposed solutions and timing and maybe some cost that you need to put in here to so everybody on your team can see what's going on. Um, so again, those can be filled out. The, the, what I really want to direct your attention to is these additional folders here that you created. There's a revised parts, obsoleted parts, reference data, and new parts. So we're going to populate those right away here. So, so in this scenario, I've already released in this particular part already, and now I'm, and I've actually created the revision associated to it. So we've got a re, re, uh, revision B here, and I'll just give you a quick look on my NX CAD here. I've actually added another hole to this particular cap here, so the no vent hole of some sort. Um, but you've seen in the title bar here, we've got revision B, and so. And then again, this is my NX integrated into Team Center. And, and in real time, as I'm making changes, uh, everybody on my team can see those changes. And so we're going to go back into Team Center here, and we're going to populate these folders with the correct information to, to release our, our particular um, data here. So again, revision uh, A has been created and released. And so I'm going to go ahead and copy that link into the revised. I'm sorry, the obsoleted parts area, because I'm actually going to be re revising. I've revised it already, and I'm going to put a revised part B into that folder. So again, I'm telling the story here of my change. There's my obsoleted part. And so maybe that goes along with telling this uh, story of this release is a, a new part, an, an assembly of some sort. And you can see I've got this additional assembly here. And one thing you can do inside of Team Center is visualize the assembly as long as the JT files exist there. So, so this is just a structure manager. It gives you a, a view of a bill of material. And then you can visualize this as well inside of the Team Center environment. You don't have to be a CAD user, anybody on your team that's part of part of the team that's making this change happen and troubleshooting the issue can visualize this and you can have discussions about this and do markups and communicate that information to your team so as you can see there's the assembly I just wanted to show you that real quickly and then uh, we're going to go ahead and add this revision a of the assembly I copy that link and put that into my new parts folder So now we've got all this information in here, and now we're ready to send this through a workflow. So again, a lot more complex than the first uh, quick release that we did. And so again, I'm gonna go create a workflow process, but this time I'm gonna grab uh, this engineering order test. I got a couple of different ones here. And again, it should be known that there's some out of the box templates, but <clears throat> I've created some, some custom templates. I've used the ones that are out of the box, but I've tailored them to my situation and what I'm trying to communicate and kind of map out what happens in the real world, maybe on my team that I'm collaborating with here. So as I select my template, I can go to the process template and, and uh, you can see all the different um, sign-offs that are gonna be occurring during this. So again, to kind of speed things along here, I'm gonna assign myself to all these tasks and we'll see how that's all done here. So there's an assign tab here. And then I'm going to go ahead and, and assign myself to each one of these tasks. But as you can see, you know, you can think about your own situation and how you might apply this. You know, so as you're collaborating on a very large team or a small team, but you're you want to have people having their input into the process in the release process here. So I'm going to go ahead and add that as a manager approval. And then there's a creating the order and making the changes. Again, I'm going to add myself here. And then there's the final approval and the last check before we release that information to the to the shop floor and to my, my other colleagues in the at work here. So again, once I've filled in all that information, I can go ahead and, and start that process. So again, unlike the quick start, you know, it was one step and it was over with. Well, now we've, we've got a little icon here that tells, tells me that this is in process here. So I'm gonna work my way over to my work list that it's called here inside of Team Center. And it, throughout my day, you know, this is something I will be visiting 
and see if there's tasks for me to perform. So in the viewer tab, you can see we've got some hyperlinks here and it's, and it's asking me, I need to decide if we're going to be doing this process. And so just to, again, to kind of revisit what we're doing here, this gives us a high level view of all the different steps in this workflow. So I'm going to move right along here and kind of approve all these different steps. But you can see I'm, going to, I'm creating, manager approving. We're going to do the work in either a CAD system or some other application. And then once that work is completed, we're going to approve that. So let's work through those steps here. So again, I'm going to move back over to my task view. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to approve that. And all along, you can document this, these comments and any kind of other information that your team needs to communicate to each other here. So again, I've got another task here. So again, in the real world, um, this would go into somebody else's work list, but for demo purposes here and to speed things along, I'm just assigning every task to myself here. So here, that was the manager approval. You can see that. And now the next step is the actual work when you're, you're working in the CAD system, you know, we've already, again, in the essence of time here, I've already completed that step where we've added an additional hole. But you can imagine at this moment in time, this is when the, it would go to the, the CAD user, the designer, and they would make those changes, roll the revision, document it possibly in a drawing, and then, uh, and then go ahead and sign off on that step here. We're completed. And now we can see that in the process here, the last step is actually a, an approval to release that to the world. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my task. Looks good again. And we're gonna go ahead and approve that. So on my last task, you notice there's nothing showing up in my task for form now. But if I go back to my home environment, there's all kinds of information here telling the rest of the story. So I've actually, you can see there's some other statuses that are applied here. So my revised parts, my revision B now has a status and it's released, whereas my revision A has been changed to the status 90 and been obsoleted. You know, maybe we still need to keep it in the system for like repair parts and that kind of thing. So it's still in there and being able to document that. But then kind of working our way down the list here, we've got a, an assembly that's also released. So again, that's, that's, that is locked down and nobody can make changes to that. And hopefully this is helpful in your environment. You can see in, a, in the digital world here, in managing our, all of our CAD data, all this stuff is happening. And, and we're not on a, an actual server base. You know, we're not on a standalone system here. Um, every, this is all happening in real time where people can search for this data on a part number and they can see that things are in a workflow and they're being released and and uh, you can apply this to your own situation and imagine, you know, this is a great way of keeping track of all the information in the engineering world that you're consuming and, and revising. And uh, and I, I guess I hope I hope that I've demonstrated that this can be very useful in any situation um, and I've worked in teams of two to 50 and 100 people. And really, in this situation, you know, people think team centers, it's maybe a, you apply that to a very large organization. But um, as you can see here, just collaborating with a few individuals, this you can kind of keep this is a method to the madness, right? You know, you don't know what's going to happen six months from now. You can kind of go back and do your searches, you know, throughout as the years pass and you can see what, you know, all the different pieces to the puzzle for this engineering order. And, and I always like to say, you know, you want to try to communicate what's happening, the whole entire story, you know, that that's been happening here in the engineering world. So um, I'll leave it at that. Thanks for your time. I guess look for another uh, short video. I know this is a little bit longer. Sometimes it's hard to tell everything in just a few minutes, but uh, hopefully this has been educational for you. And again, uh, thanks for your time. This has been Managing Data with Team Center, releasing data. I've been your host, Brian Garcia at Acuity Solutions. And again, take a look us up on the web here. Uh, we've got all kinds of information here and hope to chat with you at some point on the support line. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Talk to you again.